Hello, and welcome to the dungeon. I'm your host, Rob. In today's video, we were supposed to begin looking at a bunch of new stuff, but Playtest 6 dropped uh, a week, week and a half ago, right around the time I made this video. And I said that we'd at least take a look at Monk. We probably won't look at any of the specific Monk subclasses, because now we actually have a whole bunch of subclasses that drop for everything. So we'll probably start doing videos to look at those subclasses more on their own. But we'll look at the overall Monk here, and I will give my thoughts on Monk. Now, it's no secret that I've felt for quite some time now that Monk was a little on the weak side in 5th edition. In fact, I think my most downvoted video of all time was still my Way of the Four Elements Monk, because uh, apparently I was too far ahead of the curve saying that I thought they were garbage and kind of sucked. Well, not garbage, but you know what I'm saying. I said some strong words, a lot of people didn't like it. Although it's funny now that here we are four or five years later, and the wide opinion on Monks is that they suck. So I, I was just a little too far ahead of the, on saying that. Uh, I think Treant Monk said it even before I did probably. I didn't know who he was back then, but he was making videos before I was, and that seemed to be his opinion since the beginning. So, it, you know, it's not like I was the only one saying it or anything like that. I just didn't know him, so I didn't know who what his opinion was. I just saw them played, and I was constantly disappointed. And, you know, I want to be really clear here. I, it's not that I don't want monks to be good. The problem was that they just weren't. It's kind of like when I made my video quite some time ago as well on the Wild Magic Sorcerer. I loved the concept of the Wild Magic Sorcerer. I just didn't like the way that it was actually implemented. The magic surges are way too, you know, rare, etc, etc, etc. And we had the same problem with the monk. You're generally, I, mean, I know they're trying to move away from the whole uh, association with like martial arts and, you know, Eastern influences and stuff like that, which I don't understand. Let's just own it, who cares, you know? They're so worried that people are gonna think that they're racist because they like samurai and, and ninjas. It's like, okay, well, if you hated that, Maybe, but if you like it, I don't really see the argument. Anyways, enough of that. You know, it, I, this is a class that was clearly inspired by Kung Fu, martial arts films, Crushing Tiger, Hidden Dragon, that kind of stuff, right? And, you know, nowadays you've got things like anime, you've got things like Avatar, which have gone on to influence a lot of the other, like, subclasses and things like that. And, you know, just... Just own it. There's no, nothing wrong with saying like, yeah, yeah, we like that stuff, so we implemented it into the game. I don't see what the problem is. But anyways, it feels like, um, well, it felt originally like the monk was this class that was designed to be this light armor or no armor martial artist who's up in the front row. <clears throat> you're not as tanky as the other classes, but you're very quick and agile and you've got cool things you can do with your martial arts and whatnot, right? And while that was an interesting concept, the fact is you had like low armor class, lower hit die than basically everybody else who was hanging out on the front lines. You didn't have a lot of damage mitigation. Like, yeah, okay, you had evasion, which is quite good. And, you know, you could like, try to deflect missiles against one missile attack. You know, it's just... You know, you were soft and squishy compared to, say, fighters or even barbarians who tended to have garbage armor, but at least they could rage, you know? So, in a lot of ways, it just didn't feel like it was measuring up to the potential. A lot of your abilities were kind of weak. And one of my fundamental problems with monks, which I am very sad to say did not really get rectified at all, is their over-reliance on their well, formal key points, and now, as you can see in this table, discipline points because they don't want it, they don't want key to be associated with chi. Anyways, ridiculous. Just so many people. Anyway, it didn't really resolve anything. In my opinion. The problem is that you've got a class that requires these resources, and then everything takes those resources. And sure, you could try to compare it with, say, sorcerers where they have sorcerer points and stuff, but sorcerers have the ability to convert spell slots into sorcery points and get stuff back. Sorcery points also let them do things that normally couldn't be done in a lot of cases uh, by, you know, by other casters and stuff. And 
it's not like they're casting spells with just that one resource. With sorcery points, you also have spell slots, just like every other class in the game. You're not having to spend a whole ton of sorcery points to cast a fourth level spell. You just use your fourth level spell slot, you know? Whereas monks seem to be tied to this idea that we're going to let you do some like really cool stuff, but it's all going to cost tons of points, and you're going to have you're going to be able to do it like once, maybe twice in a fight, and then you have to rest. I I just don't really get why, you know, like rogues don't have to spend a resource to use their cunning action; they just get a cunning action every round, you know. <sighs> it's frustrating. Anyways, let's take a look at the actual class. So, primary abilities, dexterity, and wisdom. Uh, design note, we'll take a look at that. It says martial arts starts with a d6 rather than a d4 for its martial arts die, and the die applies only to arms, strikes, not weapons. Weapons are now uh, enhanced by weapon mastery to keep up with other classes. The most unarmed strikes needed this damage boost, which goes to a d12 rather than a d10. Now, on the surface, this is a nice change, and a buff on the surface. The problem is, that it no longer applies to your weapons now, which are only enhanced by weapon mastery. And monks, I mean, yeah, you can use weapons with weapon mastery. Ah. Okay, we'll get into it in a moment. I don't know why your weapon masteries can't be applied to your unarmed strikes. That would have been a cool thing for monks, where you could use your martial arts and then get the advantages or benefits of certain weapon mastery techniques that the other martial classes wouldn't have. They'd only have those options on weapons, right? It would have helped to like set you apart. Instead, now you're forced to choose between using unarmed strikes or using weapons. And, you know, before at least it was kind of, you could use one or the other. Also, like going to a D6, don't get me wrong, that is a, that is a, a much needed buff, in my opinion. But, it's not like it's a huge amount of damage. You know, you're looking at an extra one damage per hit. And that basically follows that pattern throughout the entire thing, right? I mean, the difference between a D8 and a D10 is an average of one. A D10 to a D12 is an average of one. You know, a D6 to a D8, average of one. So it's one damage per successful strike more. And, you know, it's not nothing. If you're attacking, say, three times in a round, quite easily as a monk, maybe even four, you know? Uh, you know, that that's not that's not terrible. But it's also not huge either. Especially considering the buffs that some of the other classes got. Anyways, let's take a quick look at what else we have here. So weapon mastery is a new first level feature, giving you new ways to use weapons. All the marshals got something like that, so you know, whatever. Martial discipline, formerly key. Gives an improved version of Step of the Wind, which now lets you take the, both the disengage and the dash action. By the way, that is a very nice change. There are some things on the mock that I think have been improved. It's just that the things that have gotten worse were pretty core to the class. So, the Foot Missiles has been redesigned, making it easier to use in more situations and to deal more damage on average. I don't know if that's actually true or not. Heightened Metabolism is a new 7th level feature, making it easier for the monk to regain discipline points and gain other benefits of a short rest. Very nice. Stunning Strike can now be used only once per turn, and the stun lasts until the start of your next turn. We'll talk about this more when we get there. Empowered Strikes, formerly key Empowered Strikes, now lets you deal force damage. I mean, you were doing magical damage at this point before, and magical Bludgeoning damage is probably slightly better, but force damage is great, so, you know, whatever. I won't complain about it too much. Acrobatic movement is a new name of unarmored movement improvement. <laughs> okay. Uh, Self-restoration replaces stillness of mind, purity of body, and timeless body, and it allows you to remove the conditions as a bonus action, not an action. Very nice change. Using your entire turn to just remove a condition was basically still just the same as not removing the condition. So, you know, at least now you can use a bonus action and then you can still add. Very, very needed change. Deflect Energy is a new 13th level feature allowing you to use Deflect Missiles to deflect any type of range attack, including spell attacks. It replaces Tongue of the Sun and Moon, one of the lowest rated monk features. 
Yeah, what's a good reason? Disciplined Survivor was formerly called Diamond Soul. Superior defense, formerly empty body, has been re redesigned to not rely on spells. Perfect discipline, formerly perfect self. You know, like, I don't know why they've had to rename everything. Like, come on. So we from 20th level to 15th level. That was your former capstone. Defy Death is your new 20th level feature. So, again, we have uh, Simon Throws of Strength and Dexterity. I get they want to not give you Wisdom and Dexterity since those are two of the biggest saving throws, right? Generally, the pattern is you've got Dexterity, Wisdom, and Constitution are the three big saving throws. And then Strength, Intelligence, Charisma are the three like minor saving throws. Some being, you know, obviously with grades in all of these, but in general, the first three are far more common, the second three are less common. So I get that they didn't want to give monks saving throws on dexterity and wisdom, giving them two of the big three. But in general, as a monk, you're not going to be relying on strength. You've already, you already need dexterity. You already need wisdom. You're probably going to need some constitution. Strength is very often your dump stat. And, you know, giving you strength saving throws just doesn't feel great by default. Like, I get that fighters can have that same problem sometimes. You're like a dex-based fighter, and then you've got strength saving throws. But you're not forced into that route, whereas a monk you kind of are. It just feels kind of bad. Anyways, you've got your skills, and you have simple weapons only. Uh, this is a bit of an issue too, because a lot of your feats, I hadn't even caught this, but I was watching Treant Monk and uh, Deep 4 d Dive with their collaboration, and one of the things Treant Monk pointed out is that so many of the martial feats rely on proficiency with martial weapons. So, it's kind of like this, not really a direct problem for monks, but a very indirect problem. To, you know, you can't take a lot of the good fighting feats. I mean, you couldn't anyway, because let's be honest, you need dexterity, and you need wisdom, and you need constitution. You didn't have a lot of room for feats. But on the off chance that you were going to take a feat, a lot of those martial feats you can't really get unless you find a way to get martial weapons proficiency. Uh, I hadn't even caught that, but you know, uh, just one more problem to the list of monks issues. Tools, you get to choose an artisan tool or a musical instrument, you yeah, know, whatever. Armor training, none of course. So multiclassing and the monk. As a multiclass character, you must have at least a strength of 13 in your primary abilities, dexterity and wisdom in order to multiplass in or out of the monk. So, no change there. Again, this also makes monk one of the harder classes to multiplass in and out. Not the hardest, because paladins are roughly the same, right? There's a few others that require two different stats, but they're not super multiclass friendly. Anyways, let's get into the actual features of the monk class. So, level one, you're getting martial arts. The practice of martial weapons or of martial arts gives you mastery of combat styles that use your unarmed and simple weapons. You gain the following benefits while you are unarmed or wielding only simple weapons and aren't wearing armor or wielding a shield. Bonus unarmed strike. When you use attack action with an unarmed strike or a simple weapon on your turn, you can make one unarmed strike as a bonus action on the same turn. So basically no change there. Dexterous attacks. You can use dexterity as strength for the attack and damage rolls of your armor strikes and simple weapons, except those that have the two-handed property. Martial arts die. You can roll a d6 in place of the normal damage of your unarmed strike. This die changes as you gain monk levels, as shown in the martial arts column of the monk table. So, I've already mentioned this. It no longer applies to your weapon attacks. It's only the martial arts. But it did get upgraded by one dice, so I guess, you know, it could be worse. Anyways, on armor defense, while you aren't wearing any armor or wielding a shield, your base armor class equals 10, plus your dexterity and wisdom modifiers. Again, this is fine at level 1 when all your fighters and whatnot are starting with the like, chainmail and maybe a shield, and you, and you have a like, comparable armor class. The problem is that they can rapidly get the money to buy better armor. You cannot rapidly get the 
ASIs to improve your dexterity and wisdom modifiers. And so, very, very quickly, your unarmored defense just falls far behind. And like I said, you've got a DA hit point, so this is not really great. Anyways, level one, you have weapon mastery. Your training of weapons allows you to use the weapon mastery with two kinds of simple weapons of your choice, such as daggers and spears. Whenever you finish a long rest, you can change the kinds of simple weapons you choose. For example, you can switch to using the mastery properties of maces and slings. Yeah, all right. Level two, martial discipline. Your self-discipline and martial training allows you to harness a well of extraordinary energy within yourself. Your access to this energy is represented by a number of discipline points. Your monk level determines the number of points you have as shown on the discipline table or discipline points column of the monk table. You can spend this points to fuel various martial art, martial discipline features. You start knowing three such features, flurry blows, patient defense, and step of the wind. You learn more martial discipline features as you gain levels in the class. So when you spend a discipline point, it's unavailable until you finish a short rest or a long rest at the end of which you gain all your expended points. So there's a lot of theory and discussion that short rests were basically going to be a thing of the past. And this did seem to be kind of indirectly confirmed when we saw the complete reworking of the Warlock and they're no longer going to be reliant on short rests. But in a way, this is kind of worse for monks as well because it means that you're going to be like one of the only people actually reliant on short rest. At least before, you know, like, that, uh, you know, the party's warlock needed short rest. Your battle master fighter gets back all of his superiority guy on a short rest, right? Like, you had all the people who were like, yeah, okay, let's go, let's go for a short rest. Whereas now you're like, guys, guys, just stop. I need to, I need to catch my breath. And I was like, ah, dude, not even wearing armor. Why are you so tired? Anyways. Some of your martial discipline features require you or require your target with a saving throw to resist the effects, uh, saving throw to DC. Because eight plus your proficiency bonus plus your wisdom modifier. So for your blows, immediately after you take the attack action on your turn, you can spend one discipline point to make two unarmed strikes as a bonus action. So basically unchanged. Patient defense, you can spend one discipline point to take the dodge action as a bonus action. This is kinda nice. It really, really is. And, you know, basically unchanged. Step of the wind. You can spend one discipline, po discipline point. I don't know why we can't just call them key points. Whatever. Take both the disengage and dash actions as a bonus action. And your jump distance is doubled for the turn. So, I like that they realized that step of the wind was, uh, hands down, the worst of the three options before. And they have buffed it. And, you know, I have seen some people complain that, look, oh, rogues can do that with cutting action. It's like, well, rogues can do one of those as a cutting action, but they can do it infinite times. They can do it once per round, but for no reason it's cost. You can do both, but again, most monks I see, they're spending their key points at low levels on flurry of blows, and when they get high enough to use stunning strikes at five, they use them all on stunning strikes. Occasionally, when you get to high enough level, they use it on both of those put together so that they can just try to stun somebody like four times in a turn. Unfortunately, now you'll no longer be able to do that, so that means you'll have plenty of key points left over for Step of the Wind. So, uh, I guess it's good this better. And I'm like, I don't want to be too flippant here. That is a big improvement. Like, Step of the Wind is a good ability. My point is, though, that Again, everything's coming from the same resource pool. And this goes back to our previous complaint about monks, which is that you have one, you know, one resource to rule them all, essentially, to make a Lord of the Rings reference. Uh, and that's just not great compared to other classes who have multiple resources that they can use to do different things. Not everything's coming from one pool. And uh, I don't know. I feel like this was a great chance to redesign and fix some of these problems, and it just was not taken. Anyways, level two, unarmored movement. Your speed increases by 10 feet while you aren't wearing armor or wielding a shield. Again, like, I don't like that everything requires you to be using the armorless fighting style and no shield and stuff like that. Like, I get that fits the monk, uh, the monk, 
not a stereotype, but the manga seem a lot more closely. But, I mean, I don't know. Other classes can do stuff in light armor. I don't know why the monk couldn't. Like, maybe they get those abilities, but like they get on armor defense at level one, right? And they don't have, you know, so they get that bonus if they're not wearing armor. But they still get the option of wearing, say, leather armor, like light armor, right? And then, if you find some good magic armor later, you can just give up on armor defense. Like, that's what happens with barbarians all the time, right? They start using on armor defense at low levels, and then eventually they get some, like, plus three half plate, and, you know, on armor defense just gets thrown out the window. They don't care anymore. And that's fine. Like, the point is, I would rather have multiple options instead of being pigeonholed into this one thing. And you can't even benefit from multi-classing with your monk because what are you gonna do? You're not you're not gonna be able to wear armor, right? So so often it just it just holds you back when it doesn't really need you, I feel like. Anyways this bonus increases at certain monk levels, whatever. Level three we get to flood missiles. You can use your reaction to deflect range attacks against you to deal bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing damage. When you do so, the damage you take from the attack is reduced by one D ten plus your dexterity modifier plus your monk level. That is the same. If you reduce the damage to zero, you can spend one discipline point again, because God forbid you get something for free on a monk, uh, to redirect the attack towards another creature. If you do so, choose a creature within 60 feet of yourself that isn't behind total cover. That creature must succeed on dexterity saving throw or take damage equal to two rolls of your martial arts die. The damage is the same t type dealt by the attack. So this part is different from what we used to get before. Before deflect missiles, um, like I said, the reduction of the damage part is the same, but the throwing the thing back again used to be that you had to make an attack roll with proficiency regardless of your weapon proficiencies and the missile counts as a monk weapon for the attack which has a normal range of 20 feet and a long range of 60 feet. So it was an attack roll, not a saving throw. It was a monk weapon which does mean that the damage could be scaling but you also get your dex bonus. This is just two rolls of the martial arts die which is probably better at lower levels when your dexterity hasn't had a chance to be maxed out yet. But, you know, it's it's not a big difference. And like, I don't really care one way or the other, honestly. Although attack rolls are generally better than giving monsters saving throws, just, you know, just saying. But they specifically mention over here, under the flood missiles, it's been redesigned to make it easy to use in more situations and to deal more damage on average. I mean, is it? Is it dealing one more on average? Two more on average? Like, it's not a lot, right? If you're looking at, let's say, before you would do, like, your... Let's say you had a D8 as your martial arts die. And then you had, let's say, max dex, right? So you'd be doing 4.5 on your D8, 5 from your dex. That's an average of 9.5. Now you're getting a D10 instead of a D8. So you're doing an average of 11. I mean, you know, that's not nothing, right? It's an extra one and a half damage. I just don't know that it was, you know, and that's if you hit with it, which you might not, because now it's a saving throw. I know it's a dexterity saving throw. That tends to not be great in a lot of big monsters. A lot of small monsters have good dex saving throws, like, you know, goblins and kobolds and that. But, you know, Overall, it's better that there's a dex than, say, a con save, for example. So, you know, whatever. But, I mean, the fact that they didn't mention it right here, it's been redesigned to deal more damage. And it's been redesigned to do, like, one point more, one and a half points more. I, whatever. Like I said, it could be worse. <laughs> it's just, I don't know. They seem to have this crazy idea of Wizards of the Coast of Monks are just like, OP broken, and then when people like me complain about it, they just kind of look to the sideways and go like, uh, I, I don't get it. Well, how about we give them one extra point of damage? Would that help? And it's like, ah, not, not really. I mean, whatever. I feel like this is turning into uh, me just complaining about monks, which, I mean, granted, that can be every video where I talk about monks, 
But I don't want to. I don't want monks to suck. I want monks to be good, just like every other class. You know, I want them to be on par with all the other marshals. Why is that too much to ask, you know? Anyway, she gets up class. Uh, they're no longer ways. They're all now like warrior of mercy, warrior of shadow, warrior of the four elements, warrior of the open hand. Maybe they thought that if they change it from way to warrior, that people like me might think it's better. <laughs> but sort of see it didn't work. Uh, whatever though, you know, you get some plus level three, just somebody else these days. Level four, you get an ASI, just somebody else. Level four, you also get slow fall. You can use your action when you fall to reduce any damage. Uh, this is fine. This, uh, well, I mean, I, would just, I just wish it was just like a feather fall and you just took no damage at all. But you reduce the damage by an amount equal to five times your mob level. I mean, that's probably, that's probably sufficient. And the fact that there is some scaling there, like theoretically, that's kind of nice. But again, like, was Featherfall too powerful? So we had to put a cap on, on the falling damage? I don't know. Level 5. Extra attack. Yay. You can attack twice now instead of once, just like every other marshal. Good stuff. And Stunning Strike. This is one of the core monk abilities that we had before. Once per turn, when you hit a creature with a simple weapon or an unarmed strike, you can spend one discipline point to attempt a Stunning Strike. So you're going to succeed on a constitution saving throw or have you stunned condition until the start of your next turn. So, where to start? I, okay, let's start with the good stuff, okay? Stunning Strike now applies to your weapon attacks, your simple weapon attacks. This is nice. It means you could use like a bow or other ranged weapons potentially, right? And you can stun somebody with that. That is better than what we had before. Um, that's about it. <laughs> before, at least, you could blow through all your key points, land three or four attacks on a target, and use Stunning Strike every single time. Because the problem is that it's a Constitution saving throw, which is the best saving throw for monsters in the game, statistically speaking. Obviously, some monsters have weaker, but overall, Constitution tends to be the best saving throw monsters get. And you've got things like legendary saves to contend with when you get to higher levels, right? So at least before though, you're like, okay, I hit this guy twice, I'm gonna use my flurry of blows and hit him two more times, and I'm gonna use stunning strike on all four of those hits. And just force him to make four saving throws or burn one or two legendary saving throws to not get stunned all in one round of combat. And at least, even if they had to use a couple of legendary saves and they avoided the stun condition, at least you felt like you did something, right? Like you'd, you'd force the, the dragon or whatever to use two of its legendary saves out of three. Like that, that is, that's not nothing. That's a big deal, right? Whereas now it's like once per turn. And so if they make a save or if they have a legendary save, and nothing at all. But it's just... I don't know. It's very disappointing. It also used to be stunned until the end of your next turn, I'll point out. Now it's stunned until the start of your next turn, which means that you don't even get to take advantage of it having the stunned condition. <laughs> so, you know, let's say, let's say that you, I mean, I guess you could if you managed to stun on the first strike. So that, I guess there was that. Your subsequent strikes could take advantage of it. But before, at least you had like an entire round, you know? Now, everybody else in your party has a round, and you don't. Uh, whatever. I mean, needless to say, I'm quite disappointed in this change. I know there's horror stories of monks that stun locked the DM's boss, and then the party killed it with no problems whatsoever. That kind of stuff happens. Don't get me wrong. But just as likely is it. The monk missed on one of his attacks, hit on two others, the monster made both saving throws, and the monk did nothing. And then the next round, the monk managed to hit a couple times, the monster made one saving throw, missed the other, and then used a legendary save, and the monk basically did nothing. That's generally been my experience. Oh well, moving on. I, I guess on the, the plus side, You'll now have key points to spend on uh, all your other abilities. 
by patient defense and step of the wind because you won't be dropping all in one round on stunning strikes. <laughs> uh, level 6, Empowered Strikes. Whenever you deal damage with your unarmed strike, you can deal your choice of force damage or its normal damage type. Okay. Level 6 feature. You gain a feature from your own top class. If you deal, everybody else does that to you. Level 7, Evasion. So, like I said, Evasion is great. We had Evasion before, you know. When it is subject to an effect, it allows you to make a dexterity saving throw to take only half damage. You instead take no damage. You can see the saving throw and only half damage if you fail. Uh, you don't benefit from this condition if you have the incapacitated condition. That has been ad added on. But honestly, I, I don't really think of that as being a nerf. That just seems logical. Obviously, if you're paralyzed or unconscious or whatever else, you're probably not going to be very evasive. So, no big deal. This is one of the better abilities that monks get. And of course, it's shared by rogues. <laughs> uh, level 7. Awesome. Heightened metabolism. You spend at least one minute resting, you can give yourself all the benefits of a short rest. I'm surprised they didn't make you spend a discipline point just to do this. <laughs> uh, whatever. But they didn't, thankfully. So once you use a feature, you can't finish again until you finish a long rest. So this is actually pretty handy. I've seen some people say that it comes too late and that by level 7 you don't really have to worry about key points. I don't really agree with that. I feel like, I mean, maybe it'll be different now because I don't want to study strike multiple times in a round. But I feel like you always worry about uh, key points on a monk. It just kind of never goes away. Yes, it gets better when you're like, you know, level 17 you've got a ton of them. But, uh, you know, it never completely disappears. Excuse me, I'll take a drink of Monster Zero Ultra. That no, was not a sponsorship. It's just the truth. Level 8, ability score improvement. Just like everybody else. Level 9, acrobatic movement. While you aren't wearing armor or wielding shield, you gain the ability to move along vertical surfaces and across liquids on your turn without falling during the movement. Eh, that's kind of cool, you know? The whole idea of the uh, monk who like, runs along the wall or whatever. Or, you know, skips across the water. Eh, that's fine. It's thematic. We've seen that in movies, you know? Level 10, self-restoration. To a sheer force of will, you can use a bonus action to remove one of the following conditions from yourself. Charmed, frightened, or poisoned. In addition, foregoing food and drink doesn't give you levels of exhaustion. Uh, we do have a design night note here on disease. We might as well read that, and then we'll talk about the ability. So in the 2014 versions of the Monk Paladin, both classes gained immunity to disease. That immunity has been removed from the playtest versions of the class because the word disease doesn't have a solid immunity in the rules. And for years, the rules have delivered disease will affect due to poison condition. The game will continue to use the condition in that fashion. Alright, so losing immunity to disease doesn't hurt us because the game doesn't have disease anymore. That's fine. As I said before, being able to move this kind of stuff as a bonus action is way better. Uh, you know, because now you can actually, you know, you get feared by a dragon before you spend a whole round running around with a chip your head cut off. And then at the end of the round, you make a saving throw. Hopefully you pass it. And that was your turn. You just were afraid and did nothing. At least now you can just be like, yeah, I'm going to remove the condition. Oh, yeah, or, or your option was to use this ability to uh, remove the condition, and then that was your turn. So instead of running around for the whole turn, you stopped running around for the whole turn. At least now it's a bonus action. This is, this is way better. This is a big improvement. Level 12, you get another subclass feature. Level 12, another ASI. Level 13, deflect energy. You can now use your deflect missile feature against range attacks to deal any damage type, not just bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing. It doesn't specify that it has to target you only, unless. Let's take a look. Does deflect missiles specify that? Range attacks against you. I mean, this could actually apply to AoEs, which is something I hadn't thought about. I mean, logically it shouldn't. I guess maybe that's like attacking against an area, though, not attacking against you. Who knows? 
Don't so maybe you can't. Maybe I'm fake news. Level 14, Discipline Survivor. We definitely need more clarity on what attack you means. <laughs> but if it means you as a, as a single target, or like, you know, as a Scorching Ray, we are reflecting one specific ray, then, you know, that would, that would make a lot more sense. That's probably how it's supposed to be read. Now that I think about it, I doubt it applies to AOE attacks. Feel free to correct me in the comment section, though. Discipline Survivor. Your physical and mental discipline grant you proficiency in all saving throws. Additionally, whenever you make a saving throw and fail, you can spend one discipline point to reroll and take the second result. So, this is basically what we had before. Um, this really is a great ability, though. This used to be Diamond Soul. <laughs> I don't know what was wrong with just calling it Diamond Soul. But anyways, uh, this was a great ability. It's definitely one of the best abilities mocks get. Being proficient in all saving throws is awesome. Being able to re-roll saving throws with all your discipline points you have left over because you weren't able to use them all in sunny strikes is also awesome. So this is actually pretty good. But I mean, it's already pretty good, right? So no surprise. I guess indirectly it's a buff though since you don't have key points or since now you can't spend your key points on better stuff. <laughs> Uh, level 15, perfect discipline. When you roll initiative, you regain four spent discipline points if you have none remaining. Ah. Why couldn't they just say, because uh, here's the problem I have with this. Uh, that, that's not necessarily a terrible, terrible ability on the surface. The problem is, what if you only had two or three discipline points going into the round? But now you regain nothing. Uh, why isn't it just, you know, you regain four Four spent, or just say, if you have you know three or fewer discipline points when you roll an initiative, you know increase your total to four or something like that, right? And then you'd always have at least four going into every fight, and then you can use a bunch. And if you have one or two left over, it's fine. You know, it, it wouldn't matter. But it, if you have none remaining, just incentivizes you to, you know, ask your DM if you can spend key points out of combat to get back down to zero again. I don't really... It's such a simple fix. See, who knows, maybe when we get the survey, people can comment on it and we get it addressed. Because it's really not a hard fix at all. It's just, again, it's really frustrating that it's like, oh, well, if you have no key points, you can get four back. And this isn't like a battle master maneuver where, you know, if they have none left, they get one back. One superior died. Okay, that's fine. Now they can use that one maneuver. But it's like the monk's like, oh, you still have some reserves. But you actually have too many reserves. You need it to be completely empty. And then you can get back four. If you only had one or two, well, eh, screwed. I don't know. Anyways, level 16, we're getting another ability score improvement of our feet, of course. Level 17, we're getting a feature for our monk class. Level 18, we're getting superior defense. As a bonus action, you can spend three discipline points to perfectly bolster yourself against harm for one minute. Or until you're incapacitated. During that time, your resistance to all damage except force damage. Now, I know a lot of people have actually complained about this because you used to be able to become invisible for one minute and then also about the additional benefits, right? Uh, you could also spend points to cast astral projection <laughs> without needing material components. Uh, that, that was kind of cool. I didn't really see it done a lot, but it was cool. However, the problem is that before, you used to take your entire action, and now it's a bonus action. So yeah, you don't get the invisibility, which I guess sucks, but at least now it doesn't take your entire turn. So I kind of like it actually better in some ways. I get that under perfect conditions, if you knew that you were about to fight, and you could tell your DM, I'm going to activate my uh, Diamond Soul, and then boom, fight starts. Or my empty body, sorry, not my diamond soul. I'm going to activate the empty body, and then boom, fight starts. Perfect conditions, right? Whereas a lot of times you don't know that there's about to be a fight, or you think there's going to be a fight, so you activate it, and then you spend 20 minutes role playing with the NPCs, and then fight. And it's like, oh no, I'm afraid your uh, ability wore off 19 minutes ago. And I'm like, ah. Okay. Guess I, uh, because I just. Suck again. Good thing the wizard has wish. <laughs> but yeah, 
being able to do it as a bonus action, in my opinion, is probably better. I don't know why it couldn't have been both. Maybe move it from four to five, right? Because that was the other thing. It used to cost four, now it only costs three. Maybe move it from four to five, or from four to six. Uh, you can make it more expensive. But make it a bonus action and give you all the other abilities. I would, I would fuck that. Anyways, 19th level, we get another ASI. Overall, I do think superior defense is at least as good as the old ability. Yes, you lose the invisibility, but at least now it doesn't cost you an entire round of combat to use it. And that's kind of a big deal to me. Anyways, especially since your fighter is just going to, like, action surge in back-to-back -back rounds and kill it before you can even do anything. So you're just going to, like, spend your entire action doing nothing. And then by the time it comes back to you around the next round, the fight has already killed it. And you're like, oh, okay, it's, it's dead because I used my capstone ability. Anyways, level 19, ability score improvement. Gain the ability score improvement at feet, blah, 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 just like everybody else. Level 20, your capstone. Defy death. If you jump to zero hit points, you can spend four discipline points. Roll four martial art die and then add the dice together. The number of hit points, uh, or your number of hit points instead changes to the total roll. I will think they said you didn't regain because that might have left people wondering, like, wait, if I go to like negative 10, does that 10 carry over? You know, they're just like, no, your hit points becomes this number. Each time you use this feature after the first, and this one point cost is increased by two. And if it's finished a short or a long rest, the discipline cost resets to four. So, I mean, this is actually a pretty good ability, especially since you're a monk and you'll probably get reduced to zero. So, you know, now you can bring yourself back up again or just not go down in the first place, I guess, more specifically. Um, probably would have been nice to see an ability score increase like everybody else seems to be getting these days, where you could get, you know, plus two to either your dexterity or your wisdom. <laughs> Every other class seems to get a plus two to whatever their core stat is, you know? Whereas with monks, it's like, eh, no. Nah. But I don't think it's a terrible ability. But yeah, it would have been really nice to see a plus two and raising your cap to 30, just like everybody else got. So I guess to sum up and give my closing thoughts um, on the base monk class, I think that there have been a number of small improvements overall, but that is offset by a couple of major nerfs. And I, I understand the argument that Stunning Strike was maybe a little too good before, and it being able to spam it out just like over and over and over again and just until eventually somebody misses the saving throw, and that was a little much. I, I get that. But I think there are probably better ways to address it. Um, I don't know, maybe make it a different saving throw instead of con. Anyways. <sighs> yeah, either way, but there have been a, a lot of small little improvements, right? Uh, improvements to things like your. Um, you know, your step of the wind and all that kind of stuff. Um, improvements to your martial arts die, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I still just don't see a lot here to keep up with like what we've seen from the other classes. Like it really feels like fighters are better than they were before. It feels like, I mean, maybe not paladins, but you know, maybe not rogues. But you know, most of the other classes seem to be better than they were before. And then you've got the class that was probably the weakest in the game. I mean, I would say almost definitely, because I mean, what other class really compared to Mount on launch? Like probably Ranger was, was really weak, but Ranger just saw buff after buff in book after book, especially Tasha's, which did so much to help Rangers and to make Rangers a really, really solid class. And Monk just still remains probably at the bottom. And look, I get it, a guy trying to punch a dragon probably is at the bottom compared to somebody trying to spear that dragon with a lance. That probably seems like it's gonna be more effective. But, you know, it would have been nice to see Monks get a little more, and I just don't really feel like they did. 
So I'm sure there's going to be some people who uh, don't like my take on monks, but that's okay. I, I understand it. And like I said, I want to be clear that you know I'm not trying to hate on monks. I wanted the monks to be better, and I'm more just disappointed. I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. Like your parents always say. Well, at least my parents always say. I don't know if your parents always say that. Maybe yours are like we're both angry and disappointed. <laughs> Either way, um, I feel like they fixed things that need a little bit of tweaking. But like, at the end of the day, this is the other problem. I guess what I'm going to try to say. The core issue with Monk comes back to the reliance of basically all your abilities on, you know, formerly key points, now discipline points. Everything is being fueled by one pool. Basically, most of your subclass features also use the same exact pool. And, you know, you don't really have a lot of good ways of replenishing that until level 7 with heightened metabolism. Which is a great feature, don't get me wrong. It's just, you know. Uh, whatever. So overall, I don't, I don't think monsters are totally lost. Awesome. Like, this is the thing too. Even before, even though I feel like monks are probably the worst class in the game, it's not like you couldn't still make good monks characters. And it's not like monks were terrible in every level range either. Like, low level monks are fine. Level 5 before, when you got extra attack and strength strike, monks were still pretty good, at least, you know, as long as you were able to get enough short rest, keep re recharging all your points, then monks, monks were fine. The problem was that, you know, by the time you get into like level like 9, 10, 11, like 11, you know, paladins are getting improved divine smite just added to all their attacks. Fighters are getting a third attack around. And then, you know, what's your monk getting? Eh, you know, not a lot. So, you know, there were level ranges that were monks were competitive. There were builds you could do, especially if you were like pretty clever with some multi-classing, you could make some pretty good monk builds. It just took a little bit more work, right? And I think that'll be the same here. I don't mean to be all demon and gloom. I'm sure that, you know, the kind of people who are able to make some pretty successful monks in 5e will probably be able to do the same here, right? It's just, once again, it feels like the difference between building a class at Ikea versus just buying it already assembled for you and ready to go. <laughs> That's the best comparison I can make. So, uh, yeah. It would have been nice to see more. And there's still time, right? We'll have the player feedback video, or, or, or uh, video, I mean, it'll make a video about it, there's no trade. Right? But they'll have their, um, like their feedback survey, and people can give their ideas and thoughts and responses and stuff. And, you know, maybe we can still, I don't think it takes a lot. I think that maybe giving monks a bit better um, key point regeneration. Because I also get the idea you don't want to just flood them with key points either, right? Because then they're just doing everything all the time. But I don't know if that's a bad thing either, honestly. Maybe you're wrong there. Maybe you do just give them, like, give them four at level two or something. And then scale it up with your monk level from there, right? At least then they got a couple more points, they can do a couple more things. I, I don't know. Point is, everything's tied to one resource, and that resource starts getting stretched really, really, really thin. And I think that and the constant reliance on wisdom for armor instead of armor for armor, those are kind of like the two big things that just, the, the anchors that seem to hold the monk back. And neither one was addressed, which, you know, at least in my opinion, leaves Monk in a questionable state. But I guess we'll see. Um, you know, I haven't, I haven't seen anybody play a Monk yet in the new playtest. So, you know, it's possible they're wrong. Uh, you know, rogues turned out to be better than I originally thought they might be. We'll figure out ways to, you know, make it work still. Uh, so, who knows? Uh, as far as Coming up next, I will be doing um, probably my video on The Witcher and Endless Realms, but then we're also going to be looking at the, some of these subclasses, particularly the College of Dance, which is one that multiple people have now requested me to do a video on. So that will be coming out.
fairly shortly, shortly too. Uh, I actually, actually really like, like the look of Call of Duty. I feel like, I don't know, I feel like it could be more of what I expected from Mox than Mox are. <laughs> Which is just not great for Mox again. I'm sorry, Mox. I'm sorry the wizards seem to hate you for some reason. Uh, anyways, that's everything. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Oh, feel free to like, subscribe, comment, you know, all that stuff. The, the usual YouTube stuff. Anyways, thanks for watching. Bye.